Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mac Daddy 1911 May 1 here with the Shade Tree Survivalist. Today I'm going to do a video on this complete, complete disassembly of the 1911 A1 uh, range officer that I own. And then, then do a, uh, a clean it of course. And then I'm going to lubricate it. I'm not going to worry about putting the cleaning and so forth on camera, but the uh, uh the reassembly, the lubrication and reassembly of the firearm, I will do. What you see before you, I've got some nitrile gloves. I've got the correct uh, Torx head bit in the screwdriver for the Torx <clears throat> screws that hold the Hoag uh, grips on. And I'm using a 764 Allen head to use as a push punch to push this uh, the mainspring pin out. And... Um, then of course I'm going to clean it and so forth. Um, normally I would just use this punch, but um, it's easier to hold on to with the screwdriver with the uh, 764th bit to push that damn thing out. But anywho, we're going to completely strip it down to the frame to the bare essentials, minus taking the sights off or the grip bushings that are under that the screws actually screw into. Um, before we begin. I have my safety glasses, my nitrile gloves, and of course the gun. Externally, you cannot tell whether it is loaded or not. I'm going to put the safety glasses on and, of course, clear the weapon. And, of course, it does have a live round in it because what the hell good is a gun without any ammunition? So we're going to set those aside out of the way so they don't line back up into the gun. And then do our basic field strip. And while I'm at it, I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how to uh, check the tension on your extractor on a traditional 1911 with the internal extractor versus the external one with the spring like in this. I think it's Smith & Wesson and um, 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 uh, Six Hour and so forth. They use these the uh, type of uh, extractor that's on your Glocks. First things first, I always cock the hammer. That just relieves tension when you are working the slide to the rear to disassemble it. Used to, I would stand it on in, lock that, and take it. Screw all that crap. This is how I do it nowadays. Line that uh, up with the takedown notch. Pull your uh, slide lock out. Set it aside. And then just gently allow the slide to go back forward. Of course, you know it's going to give me crap because I'm on the damn oh, yeah. camera. That's the way it always is. But, you, of course, you want to hold on to that and uh, maintain control of it. And, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know what, ladies and gentlemen, if it wasn't for the comedy relief I give you guys, you guys would probably have a very boring life. Who knows? Um, yeah, I'll put the gloves on. Um, anywho, we've got the... Uh, recall spring and the spring got out of the way flip the little link here down um, turn the barrel bushing out the lock and remove it oh come on you don't have to give me a crap your entire life been wanting to do this video for a while now and been farting around with it and you know it's got to do this when I'm on camera you know what Get your butt out of the way. Maybe you're holding up progress. There we go. I, had, I was turning the wrong damn way. That's your barrel bushing. Pick the barrel up slightly to disengage it from the lugs. Pull it out. It's a little dirty. Not too bad. I'll clean it up, of course, anyway. Let's see. We'll line it up here. So you can see all the pieces and parts and the way they they work together. Okay. Now this is your basic field strip. You got the frame. You've got the slide down and taken off. Okay. And all you do, you know, in normal normal cleaning, you would wipe everything off. But I want you guys to notice just how dry those rails are. There's no oil left on them. And I oiled it the last time as a as a demonstration, because um, normally I grease it, but they are bone freaking dry from just plain oil. 
Okay, get that up there so you guys can see it. You can see just a little bit of a shimmer of oil here. And you can see it's dirty. I mowed the grass with the damn thing on my hip, wide open. And this is the reason we're going to do a complete tear down today. But that that is the reason your gun will fail. Okay? At the range. Because you damn slide the rails and all that. It's so, such a long rail there. I mean, all that. And that's where you're going to have binding and so forth. So I'm going to show you how I normally oil it. But I want to do, to do this as a demonstration because it's just... It's, uh, you know, it needs to be done. So let's disassemble this thing right quick. We may end up having to make this two or three parts simply because it will take a few minutes. Uh, when, she, when you only do this once or twice a year at the very most, um, you know, you're not as good as, you're not an expert at it like a uh, gunsmith who specializes in it. Of course, you want to take your screws and set them off to the side so they don't get knocked off the bench and into the floor and then you have to get the magnet out to find them. Got those two off. We will be removing all the guts. We will be removing the um, magazine catch, the trigger, disconnect, sear, hammer, Thumb safety, the plunger spring and the two plungers, um, the tang safety, the main spring housing, and so forth. But now we've got that off. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I try to maintain my guns, but I don't I'm not freaking out if they're uh dirty or whatever most of the time. Because it's it the damn thing, it just works. Okay? It just works. You don't have to be so ill about it um and you can see some of the gun oil specifically more than likely the um either the clean bore or the um rim oil that i used on it and you can see how it gets under the grips and how it gets all caked on there we'll get we'll remove all that and get all that cleaned up uh the next step is you want to push out the mainspring pin here and in order to make it a little bit easier you want to lower the hammer you don't want to drop just drop the hammer you want to lower it such as that so it's all the way against the frame it could damage it if you just pulled the trigger and it slammed against the frame that may have been what caused the uh disconnect to uh, give me all that crap on the stainless steel gun change the ends we're gonna go with the 764th allen head and I'm going to lay this rod under there so it can push on through without. I don't have an armor's block yet. That is one of the uh, tools that I am purchasing in the coming year. And you just push down on it and you can see it's, it's coming out the other side. All right, you have to remember this thing is under some tremendous spring pressure. Okay, after a slight technical difficulty. I'm going to take the edge of it and put it on the bench and push down and apply a little pressure. And probably going to have to use that punch at this point to push it on out. And of course, it will capture it because it is under spring pressure. Take that pin. Don't lose that baby. Set it off to the side also. And then by pushing down on it. Remove your punch, ease up on it, and boy, look at look look at the dirt right there. Look at that dirt. Make sure it's focusing. And the uh, the plunger apparently is not captured by the little bitty pin that's supposed to be in there. Yeah, that damn pin is completely missing. I wonder what the hell happened to it. You can see it right there. There's supposed to be a pin through there. So that pin has disappeared somewhere along the line. Maybe I didn't push it all the way back in correctly, but we'll take this apart. That's the upper, uh, the hammer strut uh, plunger. And let me get my little uh, hook here. That's your mainspring that actually operates the hammer. 
and the bottom plunger that also acts as a, uh, a locking mechanism to lock your bottom mainspring housing pin in. Okay, so you can see it's still good and well greased up. And of course, we'll take this thing completely apart and clean it. But yeah, that damn one, one pin there is missing for some reason. And there is no telling why. Now, let's see if we can disassemble the uh, thumb safety without losing the spring or the two plungers. I'll wrap my fingers off a little bit here. Mm, I think you have to have the hammer cocked in order for it to work. Yep, and uh, it jerked out right out so easy. So... I could have lost that, but it didn't spring. It's got oil, quite a bit of oil on it. This is the rear plunger um, that actually helps uh, main, uh, retain the thumb safety. And then there's the front one that operates and maintains uh, the uh, slide lock. So we got that out. We'll set these aside. I think we'll do it like this here so you can see it now the um, that is your tang safety what it looks like okay set it aside over here and um, okay let's see the uh, this is your uh, spring that operates your trigger mechanism the entire uh, the actual trigger itself the sear, the disconnect, and so forth. That's that's what that is. And it has a little hook at the bottom that retains it. If the damn camera will focus in the frame. Okay, and you can look at the back of the frame. Now, in this shot... Okay, in this shot with the hammer strut, this is the hammer strut up out of the way this is your disconnect this is the sear and this is the bottom of the hammer here okay and that's what all that looks like now all we need to do is push this pin out and we can get it all out of there and you can see it's coming right out you want to make damn sure you don't want to lose that either lift the hammer up and out that's what the hammer looks like and of course, I'm not holding it into the camera. I'm trying to do the <laughs> these two operations can be a little bit of a pain in the damn neck. All right, next, the last pin that you will need to remove, you just push it from the right to the left. If you're looking at the rear of the gun, that frees up the disconnect and the sear. And that is the two parts right there. All right, camera focus for no, not there, right there, you piece of crap. There we go. And the disconnect. All right, it works like that. Okay, and this is the sear. I had to stop the damn camera in order to get, and put my hands up there so it'll focus on it. And that's your disconnect, and they work like this here, okay, in the gun. And then the hammer comes over here, and it it hooks in right there like that. And that's, well, actually, like that there. Okay, so this is your half cock notch, and this is your full cock notch. And if I can get it in the camera so you guys can see it. But anywho, yeah, they're all, they all have dirt grit and crap and that's another reason we need to clean them because otherwise it will accelerate the wear in the handgun now i uh, need another bit a very small uh, flathead bit you want to make sure that the screwdriver bit is fit very i mean correctly on this next deal because you do, you can easily bugger up the screw and which may interfere Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to take the slide lock out. What you have to do is push out on it. Okay, you can see it being pushed out right there. You have to push out on it and 
turn the uh, screw and it locks it in and then it comes right out no problem and yep we're going to take that apart and clean it now like i said this is a once a year kind of deal and that is the, what maintains the trigger and the trigger bow now all you got to do is push the trigger out to the rear boom you're done and it's got grit and crap all over it so now i'm going to wipe everything down clean everything up and then we will go from there but that's the bare frame you do not remove the bushings the way they are in there in order to keep them from backing out before the days of uh, Loctite. They have a tool that goes in there and spreads them out. Okay, peens them basically so that they won't back out. And if you take them out, you can't get them to go back because they're distorted on the inside part. So you'd have to buy a brand new one, which they're not expensive, but who wants to wait a week or two <clears throat> for the part to come in? So you don't take those off. You ne never try to remove the plunger tube because it is also pressed into there and it requires a special tool. Let me see if I can get the freaking camera to focus. All right. And yep, she is filthy and dirty. So I will clean it up. And we never did fully disassemble the slide. So before I get any further, this is something I wanted to show you guys. Let's disassemble the slide. This is pretty easy on a standard Series 70 type firearm. All you need is a small punch. And that was even, that's a little too small. Push in on the base of the firing pin and pull down. Oh, crap. <laughs> and if you go in too big a hurry and don't capture it with your hand, this is what happens in the firing pin in the spring. It pops right out. It's quite a bit of pressure. I, I jerked on a little hard. That's embarrassing. But, hey, it happens. Another reason to wear your freaking safety glasses, right? Okay, so you got, <laughs> we spoinged the firing pin and the spring out, and there's the, reti the uh, retainer plate. Now, <clears throat> only thing left to do is to get the extractor out, and usually you can push it out unless it's really tightly fitted. And that's what it looks like, right? Okay, it's not spring-loaded, therefore you do not want to snap it over the cartridges. It's solid steel. Okay? And... Okay, when you're cleaning it uh, and take this out, you want to inspect right here. That's the claw. Make sure it's not distorted or bent or broke. And then, of course, inspect the entire length of it for any cracks or any damage. And then when I put it back together, before I fully reassemble it, I'll show you how to check the tension. Okay? So there you go. Okay, and before I forget to show you guys, this is what the uh, uh, magazine catch, magazine release looks like taken apart. Okay, and uh, you got this screw that's got a little uh, lip on it. I guess the camera can see, yeah, there you go, you can see that little lip. That's what locks that pin in and compresses the spring inside of it. So that's what that looks like. Okay, I got it popped out, and it didn't take just a second after I got off the damn thing, so I don't, you know, you know how that works. Okay, this little hook at the bottom, the damn camera will focus, well, you can see it even if it is blurry. That has to be at the bottom in this little slit in the frame, and then the three leaves have to, to uh, work in conjunction of the different little parts in order for this booger to work. Okay, the left spring is what uh, returns the sear. The center spring is for the, uh, the disconnect and the uh, trigger. And then the very small one there, that is for your, uh, your uh, tang safety. So you just lower, and this is the thing, getting this thing to do all this at one whack. Lower that. Let's see. Get that up there like that. Set that back in there, and you want to make sure that damn she hockey 
The other thing is it can be a little bit of a pain in the damn neck. That's one thing I'll give you. And that keeps kicking around that thing. If the little pin hadn't have been lost, that piston would not be sticking up so damn high. But we're just going to push it in there to maintain that spring. All right. And to maintain pressure on that booger. Now, put the thumb safety up there. Cock the hammer. Which will be a pain in the damn neck. Of course. And brother, you got some damn pressure on that bugger now. I did this. That damn spring missing, or that pin missing, really sucks. Because that's messing up the whole damn nine yards. Now, let me. Yeah, one of these days I'll get me that damn little widget tool. It's going to be included in that big tool kit that I'm wanting to purchase. All right, we got that. Let's go ahead and put it on safe and finish the uh, inserting the pin in the bottom. That's one pin I'm not going to grease. And there is a. Uh, one side's got a, a dimple raised up on it, and the other side does not. Yeah. All right, we got it started, so that'll hold it. Let <clears throat> me make sure the, uh, the thumb safety's working. That's in and out like it ought to. Let's take that off. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's working right. Now let's go ahead and finish putting that pin on in, but I need to change this out. Yeah, it can be a little a little aggravating, ladies and gentlemen, but it's any kind of machine you work with. It can be that damn way. Tell you what, we're not even going <clears> to <throat> keep screwing around with this. Let me get something to tap this with. We just go ahead and drive it in like this right here. There you go, and it's flush. So you got the main spring housing in. Your uh, safety is working there. And uh, the thumb safety was off, so it, the hammer did fall. Now let's see if the tang safety is working. Thumb safety's off. Hammer does not fall. Push it there, and I'm going to hold it with this hand while I pull the trigger with this hand. Yep. Okay, so we got the guts of the gun back together working. All right, so we got that, we got that, got that. I'm going to wait on the grip panels. But while we're at this stage, let's go ahead and work some grease into those rails. Remember, you've got the top surface, the side, the top surface on the inside, the back, the flat back, and the top surface on the bottom portion of the rail. You want to hit all that, and you want to work it into the metal. Work it in to the metal. Don't worry about overdoing it at this stage. Whatever extra grease, uh, if you put too much on there, it will work its way out of the system when you work the slide. It's not that big a deal. Whoops, way too damn much. But, you know, like I said, oil alone is not enough. So, you really, when it comes to that reciprocating slide, you want 
a little grease on there. Not freaking just oh oil. Oil is, is just not a damn enough. Make sure I get it up under that edge right here real good. All right, that's as far as we're gonna mess with that one at this time. We'll set it aside and we'll work on the slide. Let's reassemble this thing right quick. Here's the extractor. And I'm gonna try not to forget to show you guys how um, to check the tension on this booger. Now earlier, <laughs> I'll let this damn thing shoot out of there like a rocket. Let us not do that this time around, Tempo Roger. Okay, we've got that. We've got the firing pin. Now we got to do the retention plate. The round portion of it goes toward the bottom. So the long, flat side. No, wait a minute. Mm, yeah, that's correct. I do believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is correct. What I do is I'll uh, start it in there and catch that first section. And th that is the one problem with this particular firearm. This gun. There it goes. And I still got my safety glass on. The extractor is not a very good fit with this particular firearm. This particular version of my 1911 is just not a really good fit. It's really odd to lay it down on its side and do all this on its side when I normally would not do that. That damn extractor, boy, because it's just not a really good fit. It's easy to be out of position, and then you can't get the damn thing to start. That's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. If the manufacturer does their part, bam it would go in a little bit faster now before i go further let me show you how to check the tension all you gotta do this is the slide i mean if you just take it off the gun for the first time i mean to start cleaning before you do anything else take a live cartridge okay there's no hammer to strike the firing pin so you don't have to worry about it going off and simply take it in there and push it in there behind that damn extractor like that okay can you see that now take it and Flip it over and shake it. If the cartridge just, boom, falls right out, it's way too loose, okay? If you have to really push to get it in there, then the damn thing is way too tight. And all you do is take it back out and use the frame itself to slightly, ever so slightly bend it either out or in, depending on if you need more tension. You bend it in toward the hook on the hook side in order to to tension it just a touch and when i say slight i mean like the tip of this damn thing you know very very tiny amount um and that's all you got to do okay to check the tension now let's do the rails again don't worry about getting a little too much on it now you don't want any to get in the barrel and so forth but don't worry about it getting on the damn rails. I mean, uh, putting too much on it. Because as soon as you assemble it, all that excess is coming off of there. All of that damn excess is coming off of there. But you want to cover all those surfaces. Okay? All of those surfaces. Really good. So that... Um, I always put a thin layer on my locking lugs for the barrel, and um, okay, let's go ahead and put the barrel in there. I put just a tiny bit right there, just a tiny, tiny bit where the barrel bushing will ride on the barrel and it locks up. Okay, remember, dirt and crap gets in there, it's going to seize, and it's going to, it can't get away, so it's going to seize up in the damn gun. So 
This is not rocket science. Not It's not that big a deal. That's what I'm saying. It's just not that big a deal. Barrel bushing. Now, you're probably wondering now, why is he doing that? Well, that crap gets in this mechanism, ladies and gents. Uh, the dirt and all, it could seize that bush in there and make it very difficult to get it apart. Put a little grease in there. It's coming out of there, damn it. Uh, again, you don't want to overdo it on this particular part. Now, let's go ahead and slide it in there. Now, you may want to apply a little bit of oil to your springs. Um, if so, hey, not a problem. It's not hurting a damn thing either way. If it was a Series 80 gun like the Colt, I would not be able to do it quite like this. Are you not in there where you need to be? Yes, you are, sucker. All right. Pull it to the takedown notch where the square in the takedown notch is at. Now, here's another thing. This is what was causing me right here in this area where my fingertip is at. That is the area in the uh, on the Coke Combat Unit that was, it was, uh, there was a little tiny burr there and that's what caused that damn thing to seize up and not want to do, not wanting to lock it back. A little bit of grease there. Do not swing it. All right, you'll get the idiot scratch. If your notch, if your takedown notch is right there where it needs to be, and when I say don't swing it, don't swing it from way down here. You want it to, to bring it up there. Push down and up at the same damn time. Yeah, I should have said to check the uh, pin. And let's go ahead and pull that back out and double check that. Make sure, indeed, the swinging link, the... Uh, that connects the barrel to the frame it is indeed in place all right got that push that back forward lock this that pull this down boom and boom now see all your grease at the rear this is okay all right, work it in there now before you put the grips back on, take your clean cloth, wipe the entire gun down, get all that grease and so forth off of there, and you're ready to rock and roll, baby. Let me stop the camera, and I'll do that, and then I'll come back, and we'll put the grips on. All right, now, um, and I didn't even do this before <laughs> I turned the camera on. Um, you see this? This is the absolute worst thing you could use on your gun as far as a lubricant, but... It is an awesome degreaser. I wouldn't give you a nickel for its lubricating properties, but it is an awesome degreaser. It'll clean that uh, dried up and gummed up oil that I had on here. It'll clean that crap right off and it will not damage very much. Now, if you have a real cheap, uh, like a little Jennings 380 or something, one of them real dirt cheap pieces of garbage, uh, they'll eat, it'll eat the damn grips right off of them. Ain't that a hell of a damn note. Um, but it does pretty good job as a degreaser, the uh, WD-40. Uh, it's not worth a shit for anything else. I wouldn't give you a nickel for it. Um, there you go. All right, let's get the correct Torx head bit. Which in this particular case is a T15. And we'll put the screws back in this thing. And no, it ain't pretty and I don't give a damn. As far as the finish and so forth, uh, that is the last thing on my mind. I do not give a damn about the damn pretty pretty. Pretty is, is worthless. Um, all you guys out there who do that, hey, more power to you. I have no problem with that, but it ain't for me. Um, ain't meaning is not for me for you Yankee folks out there this is the Yankee fist but in this particular case this is the redneck fist the rebel fist um, but uh, that's what Jeff Cooper call it the Yankee fist and I can agree with that to a massive degree 
It is a beautiful, beautiful handgun. Now, let me give you guys a heads up right quick. Um, because you've greased the inside of it and so forth, you don't want to make you want to make sure there's no grease going to get into the barrel or onto the ramp. That's one of the reasons you don't want to overdo it. But after you've greased it, like we just did, you want to double check every so often and make damn sure it's not getting into the chamber. Okay, you don't want excessive pressure and blow the damn gun up. But I've never had any issues whatsoever. And if it can run through the gauntlet, which it will eventually, uh, one of my 1911s will. If it can go through the gauntlet with all that crap, I don't think a little grease will hurt a damn thing there, Tempo Roger. I'm trying to get the crap out of the heads of the screws and move a few odds and ends. I've got some fresh, clean Q-tips right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Q-tips are, and I mean real Q-tips. I'm not talking about the off-the-wall brands. Q-tips are the bomb. That's number one. I always use Q-tips. Number two. These are Eastern Maine Shooting Supplies Incorporated uh, patches for 9mm, 10mm, 38, 45, 410, and 28 gauge. I'll use these. Um, the Hoppy's number nine. Love it. This, uh, if you're inside your home, the 40X bore cleaner from Remington, it does okay. It's not nearly as loud a smelling as that. WD-40 for cleaning off dried and gummed up oil, and then wipe it completely off till it's totally dry, because it's useless as a lubricant. Um, a good set of uh, your preferred brand of uh, gun, uh, gunsmithing screwdrivers and uh, the correct size punch to push out the one main spring pin and then just to ease out the rest. And of course, your little gunsmithing quote unquote dental tools, AKA ice picks, okay? That's all I use. And then of course the uh, the brushes and uh, and so forth for the cleaning of it. But that's, that's it. I mean, there's nothing, there's no magic. Um, of course, this liquid here is Lucas. It will adhere, it will stick, it will do the job. And the grease is, of course, the Brown L's. Uh, well, it's not Brown L's. It is Luber Plate 130A. Okay. Which I ordered from Brown L's, but you can order it directly from Luber, Luber Plate. They make industrial greases for all kinds of things, including. Uh, greases that come in contact with human food but that's the way i do it ladies and gentlemen that's it will it will run when and it will not be dried out i mean i can come back in six months and we can pull that slide off of there and that grease will be there when your thin ass gunnels will just evaporate right the hell off and gum up the works like what was under the um the hogue grips so there you go that's how i do it once a year the m1a is the same way i'll take it apart and i will uh grease it and oil the parts that need oil and the rest gets greased that's all there is to it and every time i take the gun apart and i field strip it i do exactly what i just did earlier is i take a live cartridge and shove it up into the extractor and check the tension if it will not hold the cartridge it will not extract reliably if it will hold the cartridge, it will extract reliably, okay? Um, but there you have it. Colt originally manufactured, but this is a Springfield Armory range officer, and you can see it has lots of wear and tear. It doesn't sit in a damn gun safe. It rides on Mac Daddy 1911A1's hip, and uh, I just love it. Simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please don't forget to check out our Vimeo channel, our new Viral Herd channel, our uh, Patreon account. We have started putting up videos on it, as well, of course, as here on YouTube and Facebook. This is Mac Daddy 19 Love May 1 with the Shade Tree Survivors and his favorite firearm, the 1911-45 handgun.
Thank you very much for watching.